welcome. In this video I would like to show you four different types of grinders and sharpeners and tell you about the advantages and the disadvantages of each machine. I will start with the bench grinder and afterwards I'll tell you about the Tormac T8. From Robert Sorby we have the Pro Edge, that's a linisher, and we have here the Koch grinding and polishing machine. This is a slow running bench grinder, meaning it runs 1450 RPM. Uh, a, a fast running bench grinder runs at approximately 2900 RPMs. Most bench grinders come with one white wheel and one grey wheel. The white wheel is aluminium oxide. It's, it's good for our uh, wood turning gouges. The grey wheel, I have replaced it with a CBN wheel. I like CBN wheels a lot. The grey wheels take too much heat for our turning chisels. So you better take them off or don't use them on your HSS gouges. I have replaced it by a CBN wheel because I'm a big fan of CBN. Um, always a flat surface, uh, hardly any uh, heat. Well, let's start for instance with this roughing gouge to grind. Um, normally a bench grinder comes with plates over here and over here and most of the time these plates are not quite accurate because they are mounted on these positions and they are, they are hardly ever accurate that's why we most of the time use well very often this system is used is built by one way it's called the wolverine system and it comes in very handy, for example, if you want to grind your roughing gouge. If I grind this roughing gouge, I'm looking here to see if the bevel is on the wheel. Now it is. And it has got a straight top. It's not round, it's flat on the top. This means that graining this, I only have to move it like this. And if I do that, and I keep it steady, I only need one pass. Two passes. To get it sharp again. And remember, if you do this, don't push on the wheel. Let the wheel do the grinding. And you just move the tool and don't push it to the wheel and you will have a great bevel. But there are of course a lot of tools that are not, don't, that don't have a straight line on top. Most of the time they will be round like this or like this. So let's take this one. This is my bowl gouge. It's a 16 millimeter bowl gouge with a short bevel grained it as a fingernail. And I am going to sharpen it on the CBN wheel. Therefore, I use the Vari grain from one way. When I started being a professional wood turner, I thought I had to do this all free-handed. Well, I don't anymore. 
I have a, a jig for everything now. Um, this is the vari grained from one way. And with this jig, I use for most my tools that have a round top. In this case, a fingernail. To use the vari grained, I have to consider several things. Um, the vari grained has three things to be aware of. There are three points you have to take care of. First, it is this angle. The angle between the tool and the post of the jig. Second thing is the protrusion in front of the jig. How much gouge is there in front of my jig? And last but not least is how far away is the jig from the grinding wheel? Because as you can see, now I have a sharp angle on my tool. And if I move it like this, I have a very steep angle at my tool. If you want to make it easy for yourself, make sure that if you have a, tool, a, a jig like this, that you only vary in one of the three uh, variations of the jig. For instance, in my, on my jig, this angle is always the same. And I have a line here which tells me where the V-arm has to be. Um, the protrusion is the one I vary with. So, I can use this jig from Tormek, we'll talk about that later, and set my protrusion here, or here, which will give me a definitely different angle. But because you always, well, let me frame that in a different way. Because I always am searching for this thing, I found another solution. I drilled a hole underneath my bench grinder and the hole I can't lose. <laughs> so now I have to put this post here in the V-arm and leave it there. And I can see, well, it's all looks a bit, that all looks good. Yeah, I stop it with my fingers because otherwise we'll still be waiting for it in 20 minutes. As you can see, I have a very nice bevel. Only the top of it, right? The rest is just taken away. This is my smooth bevel. That is what I can do on a CBN wheel with this line. If I would do the same thing on this wheel, put my V-arm in here and clamp it and then do the same again, I can see I get a, a totally different angle. And that of course is because this wheel, every time I grind, the wheel is getting smaller. That's why I have this It's a very expensive jig. I put it in the V-arm and press it against the wheel, clamp it, and now it has the right angle. Here you see another disadvantage of the aluminium oxide wheels. They have grooves. It's not flat anymore. If you do your rough graining there, you can't keep it flat. 
that's the big advantage of a CBN wheel. It's always, it always has a flat surface. Next um, machine is the Tomek T8. It is not a grinder like the bench grinder, but it is a sharpener. Um, meaning if you want to grind on the Tomek T8, you better take a day off of work because it's, it's, a, it's a slow machine. And that is also how it is designed. It is designed to sharpen your tools, to take as less as possible material from your tools and make it superb sharp. It's also the machine that has a, a very easy to read and easy to understand manual. They've done a very good job over there. Nat slijpen van snijdend gereedschap. <laughs> gereedschap. Let's look at the machine. Like I said, it is a sharpener. And all the things I do over there with the jigs over there, I also do on the Tormek, but in a slight different way. For instance, if we have over there, if we use the vari grained, we have a vari grained also here for the Tormek, but then it is called the SVD 186. You see, it is the same thing. I use it, for example, uh, to sharpen my um, spindle gouge. Spindle gouge has a round tip and I want to have my spindle gouge extremely sharp. So this angle for this gouge never changes, only the protrusion changes and over here the distance from this arm to the wheel um, must be set. First the protrusion set. Next the support arm. When I let the machine run, when both wheels are spinning, both these wheels, then it's in the right position. So if I now put my bevel on the wheel, the bevel should be on the wheel perfectly, and it is. So, like I said, I'm a fan of these CBN wheels, and one of the reasons I have a CBN wheel on my Tormek is that I'm uh, that I don't longer no longer have to use water in this container. Tormek. Uh, normally sells these machines with the traditional stone or with a diamond wheel. The result of, of CBN or diamond or the stone is exactly the same in this case. Um, they give you a perfect bevel. A very small disadvantage of this um, steel wheel is here you see these are very fine steel particles that have been sharpened off grinded off because it's running so slowly the tip is getting a little bit magnetic and <laughs> you have to get rid of these and now i have a wonderful bevel but if you feel very gentle over here, you feel that there's a very small burr. And I would still would like to get rid of that. So I have another little CBN thing. And the burr is gone. I said in the beginning, it is a sharpener, not a grinder. If you want to grain with this because you have hit a nail or something, um, it takes a long time. That is why Tormek also sells 
this arm, this support arm, with this thing. So where do I need that for? Well, that comes in handy. If you mount this on a bench grinder you maybe have somewhere in your workshop, you can first reshape your gouge and then with the same with a tool in the same jig go back to your tormac and then get that super finish on your bevel let's look at another tool the skew um, you want a skew to be perfectly sharp this skew also this jig the svs 50 is made to produce every time the same angle on your skew. Also, if you take this piece out, you can grind your roughing gouge with it. So to sharpen this tool, the support arm over here was in this position. To do this for the skew, it has to be positioned using the other hole. Next thing to do is make sure that the protrusion is right. And now I can grain it. So that's sharp again. If I touch with my finger on one side of the gouge, I feel that there's a little burr. And I want to take that off. So I now go to the other wheel. This is leather and it's made to take the burr off. There's polishing paste on it and I just have to set my support arm to the right distance there it is already and now feel where the burr is over there and to check if it is sharp i will <laughs> and you already cut yourself, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was <laughs> with, the, the, with the Dutch version. <laughs> if I started all over again and I had a workshop and I needed a grinder and I only had sp space for one grinder, this just might be the one. Because um, I can do fast grinding and I can do polishing. HT4004 from Kurt Koch. And on this machine I can use the Tormac jigs, and I have a Tormac as well, so why not use the jigs, right? Um, so let me grind my spindle gouge. First I will grind it rough and then I will polish it. Starting with the rough grinding, um, I have my tool in the jig again. I know my protru protru protrusion, that's a nasty word. And then I use this jig to adjust the support.
one more pass. So now you see the rough shaped profile. Pay attention to the quality of the bevel. We will refine that. Refining the bevel will do with the same jig to set the jig support. Tool still is in the jig and I put some polishing paste on the wheel. Now look at that bevel. That's a nice bevel. That is the Coot Koch V4004. Um, very nice machine, I like it. Uh, disadvantage is that these, these, this polishing paste sprays away a little bit. The white wheel over here, um, you will immediately notice that it gives much less heat to your gouge than these aluminium oxide wheels do. Um, this is aluminium oxide and the aluminium oxide over here is, is together with ceramic material and there's a lot of air between the ceramic material and the aluminium oxide. And you, can, you will immediately notice that it results in much less heat. I got this machine uh, when I was demonstrating in Ireland, making pepper mills. Um, and and uh, I, well, it was next to my lathe and I said, what's this, what I do with it? And it's a grinder, you can sharpen your tools on it. Okay, okay, I wasn't convinced. So uh, Florian Koch, Kurt's son was downstairs also trying to sell his machines, of course. So they sent him to me. He explained it to me, show, showed me what the machine could do. And I was convinced. Nice machine. Next one is the Pro Edge from Robert Sorby. Um, the big difference with this grinding machine, or I should say linisher, because it has a uh, sanding belt over there. The big difference is that this will give you a flat bevel there where all the other machines will give you a bevel a little bit concave. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage? I don't know. If you ask me, I would say um, it is a disadvantage but that is because I am used to work with a concave bevel. If you're not used to it, it doesn't make a difference. And probably it, after two or three days I would be used to working with a flat bevel, straight bevel. That's a big difference. Um, the big advantage of this machine is that it is very small. You can work with it in, if, you're, if your turning space is 2 by 2 meters, you still have room for this machine because, you can, uh, because it takes not much space on, on the table. And also you can move it, this whole belt towards you and away from you. Therefore, it's quite easy to work on. So if you put it on a low table, you can put the belt more backwards. Now on the machine is a fine grit 
belt, which is heavily used already. Um, and when you buy the machine, there's three belts that come with the linisher. One coarse and two fine. If you want to reshape your gouge, use the coarse one, of course. Taking this one off. This machine comes with the same jigs as the other machines. This is the flat support you can use to sharpen a scraper. You just put your scraper here and move it around. Also, you can use this platform with several other tools, jigs. These two. This one is made to grind your roughing gouge. Just put it in there, put it against the belt and turn it. Here's another jig. This simple triangle is used to put a skew against and in this way it becomes very easy to sharpen. So this is the Pro Edge Deluxe, meaning you have these jigs to come with it. Um, and these jigs are more or less everything you need if you are a wood turner. This jig I haven't told you about yet, but well, you probably recognize it already. It's the same, same jig as is being used on the Tormac. Here it is used in a slightly different way. We use this jig to make a fingernail grain. For instance, let's resharpen this into a short fingernail bowl gouge. This is the rough shaping we first start with. That's the shape I want to have. It's a horseshoe. Now, let me switch this off for a minute. Um, put it in a jig. And I want to have the Protrusion 50. There's also a good manual on this one that says, and it also is on the machine for the plate. It says which angle for which tool. The only thing I have to do now is just move the handle. Before I continue, I want to make sure that the tip of the tool stays cool. So I'm not cooling it down, I'm just making sure it stays cool. Because if this thing gets blue and then you put it in the water, it's not good for your tool. One more pass. Changed the belt, the coarse belt now to a finer grit to get a smooth, a real smooth bevel on my tool. So 
So that's a smooth bevel. Look at that. So we have a smooth bevel back on my bowl gouge. But remember, it looks, it maybe it looks now that all these jigs make sure that my uh, gouge comes off the grinder every time exactly the same way. But that's not the case. If I, well, let me give you a short example. If I press only the nose against the belt and I will do nothing else, the shape of my uh, bow gouge will change dramatically. So I'm still, it's still my own responsibility to get the right shape on it. Right. Did I make myself clear? Yeah, you did. Good. <laughs> The Pro Edge, made by Robert Sorby. It is a nice machine you can use in, in very limited space. And in the deluxe version, everything is there that you need it for. So let's move on to the pros and cons of each machine. The pros of a slow running bench grinder. It is a stable, all round machine. If you use a CBN wheel, you have hardly any heat. You can work fast with it. The cons. Sparks from your aluminum oxide wheel. You need extra materials to get it grinding in the way you want it to grind. And the surface of your aluminum oxide wheel will not stay flat. The pros of the T8, you will for sure get a excellent sharpening result. The T8 has a brilliant manual. You can sharpen and polish in one machine and it has loads of jigs so you can sharpen every tool. And another pro of this machine is that there is no sparks and there is no heat involved. The cons. If you don't use a CBN or a diamond wheel the stones will not stay with their flat surface. There's no graining, it's just sharpening. And another con is that it is a very slow machine. The pros of the Koch 4000A4. Uh, you can sharpen, grain and polish in one machine. Relatively less heat if you compare the white wheel to a alumi normal aluminium oxide wheel. You can work fast with it. And there is a load of jigs available. The cons. The aluminum oxide wheel makes sparks and while polishing the machine sprays the paste which leaves you with uh, some sort of uh, mess behind the machine. The pros and cons of the Robert Sorby Pro Edge. It is a very compact machine that you can use on a very little space. Because you can move the belt backward and forward, you can always find a good position to grind your tools. And another pro is that you have a flat, straight bevel. And then the cons. A con is that you have a flat, straight bevel. You have to replace one belt for the other to switch from the grinding to the sharpening. And the belts heaten your tools. Four grinding machine next to each other. I hope you like the video and I hope it helps you when you want to buy a new grinder. See you next time.